Oh, J oh, John, you look nice with your new glasses. Right, makeup. Take six. Hello, everyone. Welcome to John's Insane Asylum. Fancy a cup of tea? I prefer some ECT. <laughs> Damn, that was so good. I just busted a nut. So yeah, hope everyone is well, and yes, these are not sunglasses, I know they look like sunglasses, but these are my new eyeglasses. So anyone tuning into this video thinking you're watching Duke Nukem, no, 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 it is me, it is Sylph John. Yeah, Duke Nukem, I will shoot come up your bum. Hail to the king, baby. Ooh, your ass is grass. And I got the weed whacker. So yeah, let's get on with the topic at hand. So, today, everyone, today, what is it, what's special about today then? Well, we seem to have World Book Day. Is there a World self Selfie Day yet? Probably there probably is, but I don't know where it is, and I don't give a flying fuck when it is. So we've got World Book Day, we've got International Women's Day, we've got World Ginger Day, we've got World um, Mars Day, World fucking World Masturbation Day, World Men's Day, Flag Day, President's Day, USA. Oh, President's Day! Oh, it's so great. Let's let, let's celebrate our. Uh, the greatest president of all time, Donald fucking Trump. Oh, Donald, you. Oh, the Donald, he's so fucking good. Oh, yes, I'm really good. I'm going to build a wall to, to, to get rid of the Mexicans. Ole Levato. Hey, Ole Levato. He doesn't want to mow. Hey, oh, he doesn't want his mow long, man. I ain't mowing his long, man. He doesn't, want, he doesn't like the Mexicans. Hey, Ole Levato. He don't like the Mexicans, so I ain't mowing his fucking long. I take a shit on his fucking long, man. So yeah, what is it today? What is it today, everyone? What is it today? What is the day today? What day is it today? Can you guess what day it is today? It's World Bipolar Day! Yes, today is World Bipolar Day. March the 30th, 2019. World Bipolar Day, brother. Bipolar Mania is one in fucking wild, brother. Oh, the following announcement has been paid for by the Bipolar World Order. You talking about masturbating all fucking week? You talking about being hypersexual like a fucking Typhlosaurus Brex, brother? Oh, brother, 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 brother. So yeah, World Bipolar Day. World Bipolar Day. So beans it is World Bipolar... <laughs> fucking hell, I can't get the fucking words out. Being it's World Bar Power Day, I thought I would talk about the topic of friends. Yeah, so if you're new watching this, my name is John, and I suffer with bipolar and obsessive compulsive disorder. But the obsessive compulsive disorder is a topic for another video. So. So yeah, my main illness illness is bipolar disorder, bipolar type two. So yeah, everyone, hold my call, hold my calls. Calling Doctor Simph John to surgery. Calling Doctor Simph John to surgery. Surgery is now in session. So, so here we are, Doctor Simph John back in the house. Been a while. So yeah, so we're going to talk about the topic of friends. So, so let's talk about. Oh, fucking, I can't get comfortable in this chair. Fucking, fucking chair, this chair is broke. So I'm literally fucking camped, I'm literally camped, virtually camped out on the fucking floor. Like a fucking, like a fucking squatter. Oh, get comfortable, man. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, right. So let's talk about my experiences with friends. So I suppose... It'd be easier to go back to my early childhood to, to give, to, to put it into context. So, 
So as a kid, growing as a kid, starting school and going through primary school, it was very. I mean, at the time I wasn't diagnosed, so with bipolar, but uh, it was strong. You know, it was a, it was a strong belief that I probably had ADHD as a kid. You know, very short tension span. You know, I, I you know I'd be fucking reading something, Re be reading a page of a book, and for and in about twenty seconds I forgot I forgot I've actually read the fucking page. To be like, have I read this fucking page? So I'd be reading over and over and over and over again, and. And I just couldn't, and and with the other kids, I couldn't really. I mean, I had friends, but you never, I never felt really comfortable with them. You know, you you felt, you felt, you felt you couldn't. There was a lot of reasons why I didn't feel comfortable with friends. Number one, I didn't feel I could relate to them. You know, I always, I always felt that I had that outsider edge. You know, like an like an outsider looking in on all these people and just thinking, oh, fucking hell, I don't like fucking people at all. You know, it was like you just couldn't you just couldn't relate to anyone, and it just I don't think the more I think the more of it was frustration and boredom. You know, some of the some of the some of the lessons, like it's like if you're not good at a subject. You're gonna be bored to fucking tears, you know. It's like I was never good, never good at maths or science. So it was like if you're not if you if you're not good at them, and you're not really willing to get better or learn, you just you just switch off. You know, you don't speak and you don't switch off. And I barely talked in school. I barely talked at all. So people thought it was like a mute, like a dumb, like a fucking. People thought you were stupid. It wasn't that, I was just like, you know, a teacher would ask a question, I just look at it, I just look at them as if they got, as if they, I looked at them as if, as if they were the local paedophile, I'd be like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm not fucking interested in this question, I'm not interested in the subject, I'm bored to fucking tears, so I'd be just looking out the window, just daydreaming about fucking, daydreaming becoming a wrestler and fucking, Baby sharks, <coughs> you know, just just fucking daydreaming and daydreaming, and and teachers and kids think you were stupid. You know, they they would think you're stupid. Well, he thinks, oh, he's not speaking because he doesn't understand. Not that, just bored to fucking tears. You know, if, if I was back in, if I the way the way I am now. If I went, if I went back to primary school the way I am now, I'd be telling the teacher, "Said this fucking subject is fucking boring. Why am I so fucking interested in three A R two B? That means fuck all to me. That means it'll be fucking a, a fucking ancient lang ancient ancient language from 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 fucking Mars. You know? It's like, what, what? Why am I? Why am I so? Why? Why is this? So in, why is this so weird? Why why do I have to do this? Three A add B add X algebra. I mean, thinking what the fuck? You know, how is that? How is that fucking? I mean, let's be honest. How many of us, right? Unless you're a mathematician, that's your job. How many of us use algebra now? As long as you can count your fucking money on a fucking well, on a good day, I can fucking count to ten, but on a in a bad day, I'm lucky to count to. I'm lucky to count to three and a half. But it's, you know, it's like if the subject doesn't interest me, that that was the thing. I just, I just sit, I just, I just fucking sit there like I'm just sat there like I was fucking stoned out of my head. You know, I was like, like oh, you know. But if it was a subject I liked, I'd be all over it. You know, I'd be so passionate. I'd be like, yeah, oh, this is fucking, this is fucking great. This is fucking great. This is great. I'm enjoying. This, this is great. But, uh, yeah, friends in school, it was just, you know, could never really relate to them. And, and then when he got bullied as well, you, so, you just sort of, you, when you're bullied, you sort of go into yourself. You sort of go in, like a, like a snail goes into their shell. It's like, 
you, you just you just think well I don't like this I don't like half of the subjects I don't like score to to begin with anyway you know and it was just it was just it was just very frustrating very frustrating because I remember the one teacher I had about three fucking times in primary school you know she she tried to, to, to get into my into my medical files you know you know to see, to see to see if it was to see if I was well the 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 the, the popular consensus models that I, I had that I had that I was autistic in school I, I was that was the consensus oh he's, he's autistic but you know I never did get I don't think I don't recall seeing a psychologist at, uh, at, yeah, at school I don't recall I don't know I don't recall I might have done I don't know I, was, I, I can't remember but you know I was very like I said very I was very socially awkward and, and, and a lot of people that suffer with bipolar they're very socially awkward it's hard for them to make friends you know because you because you because this is what I mean like I said it's a lot of reasons number one we don't like people to begin with that's one we don't like people number two we don't we can't trust people because you know because of our paranoia we find it hard to trust people because 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 of the because of the fear of being let down or stabbed in the back and and I don't know we like to, and, and another re I suppose another reason is we don't we are, we enjoy our own company I guess I guess but I'm like I said I did have friends at school but as we got as we got to high school it was like you sort of drift you sort of you sort of broke away you know it's like I mean you know, primary school I did enjoy I did enjoy some of it certain aspects of it and it was and it was more it was like having a big in a way it was like having a big extended family you know you'd, you'd sit there and you'd sit together in the corner and, and, and read books together and stuff it, and it could be quite enjoyable and you know it, it, and it could have a nice atmosphere but as you got to high school you just you sort of like it just we just it broke away you know that like that, it's it's like it's just like it's like a part of me died when I got twice. So like a part of me died, you know. It was because I was thrown into a thrown into a class where I didn't really know anyone. Didn't really know anyone at all. I only knew the one person. He was and he was a fucking dickhead. Didn't really like him. He was arrogant. He, he thought too much of himself. And it just, and of course, things happening, you know, family and stuff. Like it, it just, I just, it, I became really isolated in high school. Really isolated, more more isolated than I was in primary school. You know, I just did not like. I just did, just could not. I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it talk to people I just could not do it you know it was just really really difficult when you know especially what I was dealing with at that at, at that time you know like a, a death in the family very a cherished uh, member of the family passing away it was just it was trauma I think it was trauma and I couldn't talk to anyone about it I mean, that, I mean, in 2001, 2002, I don't know if there were counsellors in, in high school. I'm not sure. You know, if somebody, if, if somebody British can tell me, or, or American even, if there was counsellors in high school, let me fucking know, because, you know, it, it was... Because it, it, I, I needed... I needed I definitely needed to talk to somebody about it, because because when you bottle when you bottle things up, you know, but whether it's whether it's a small thing or a very very large thing, 
It can it can it can weigh on. It could really drain you physically and mentally. You know, it really can. You know, you, you know, if you have a problem, no matter how fucking small it is. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter how small the problem is. If, if it's a problem, and you want to talk to somebody about it, and you, you know, you, you talk to somebody about it, whether it's, whether it's, I don't know, the Samaritans or, or or a very close friend, it doesn't matter. You know, I don't I don't believe in that philosophy of friend in the is a pest. I don't believe in that philosophy at all. Doesn't matter how prob small the problem is, if the person is willing. To get the help, and they generally need the help. Help them. I know it can be difficult. I know it can be difficult at times when you're trying to look after yourself, and that's the main problem with me. It's like I can't look after myself, but I go out of my way to to immerse myself in other people's problems. It's it's very very bizarre. I don't know if a lot of people with bipolar are like that, but I don't know. I tend to be like that. You know, I do. T I do tend to be to 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 be like that. You know, you know, it's like it's, like I said, family and friends are important to me. I don't give a fuck about money, having loads of fucking money and being and being a fucking the richest richest person in the world. Because I know if I had money, if I was a billionaire, I'd still be pissed off. I'd still get depressed and and suicidal and fucking and fucking. I'm fucking horny as fuck. It wouldn't matter. I could be a millionaire, but I'm still a billionaire with bipolar. You know, money, money doesn't mean doesn't money. Bottom line is, you can't take money with you when you're dead. You just can't. You can't take it with you when you're dead. You know, it may be important. It may be important in this life, but the afterlife, it won't matter. It won't matter. You know, so money, money to me, uh, it's not. Uh, obviously, money. Buys us clothes, money buys us food, money pays the bills, money, and if you've got extra money for holidays or whatever you like to do, then that's a bonus. I mean, I've got that, you know. I'm I'm happy with the money I got, you know. I've got money for food, I got money for clothes, I got money for fucking, I got money for bills. I'm, I wouldn't say I got a lot of money for very exotic holidays, but you know, you just. I'm just, you know, that's, that's just the way it is, isn't it? You can't have everything, you know? But, uh, yeah, high school, it was just, you know, it really, I mean, at that time, you could have you could have said, oh, it's just teenage angst, you know? Because, cause, you know, 12, 13, you know, 13, you're starting your teenage years, and they made it very difficult, aren't they? You know, your body's going through changes, your hormones are kicking in, you're thinking about, you're thinking about fucking, you know, thinking about sex, and you're thinking about, you know, you know, you're thinking about, you know, you're thinking about masturbating and all that stuff, you know, you, you just when you start to, it's when you almost start to kick in, and of course, for girls, it's, it's not the best periods, you know. You know, it's very, di very difficult years they are, teenagers, very, and, and you're moody. So you could, so you, you did come across as teenage angst. But I think it was trauma. A lot of trauma. And, and then when you're getting bullied, cyberbullying as well. Because that's when it started to kick in cyberbullying in the early 2000s, you know. You know, being cyberbullied, being bullied by this complete fucking... Ugly ginger prick, you know, uh, you know, and being, and, and, and the, just the way it was a uh, high school over here, it may as well be the fucking army. It may as well be the fucking army, fucking, fucking grey, fucking woolly, fucking jumper, fucking tie, fucking white shirt, fucking black trousers, fucking, fucking, oh, man. You know, and then fucking being bullied and fucking just I fucking hated every second of high school. I fucking hated it. You know, I fucking hated it. Really did. You know, there was a it was a there was a gang mentality to it all in high school. Or just you know, it was like if you were from 
So, it's like, I'm from, I'm Pill, right? I was born in Pill, Pill Boy, right? Okay, so, so Pill, for me, is glass, which is another area in Newport, you know, cl closely knit, tight. And then you get the gay, and then you get the people from gay looking down on people from Pill, looking down. Is it fucking gay? Is it fucking the gay? It's payments are paid with fucking gold. I've driven around fucking gay when I used to do driving lessons. And believe you me, the fucking pavements and roads are not paved with fucking gold. They're not. So, so, they, so for them to criticise people from Pill, you know, I'm just fucking gang on it, and it's like, oh, oh, I'm the toughest from this area, or oh, I'm the toughest in my area, I'm the toughest in my street, blah, yada, 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 where you couldn't fucking, probably couldn't, they probably couldn't hit a fucking, a, a, a fucking elephant with a fucking sledgehammer, you know? Do you know what I mean? Just that fucking mentality. So it's been half, I spent half, I spent half the time in high school, just on my own, in, the LRC Learning Resource Centre. We just use computers, and I used to just to just to make um, PowerPoint presentations and stuff. You know, I used to do. I didn't ever used to play games much. You know, everyone else would play games in there. Very, very people would very, very do work in there. Very rare. You know, they just play games, and uh, and me, I just do. I just you know me just. Didn't, didn't want to go with the flow, see, I didn't want to go with the flow with other people, you know, and just do my own thing, you know, and it's like, and, and you know, and, and they just lost a lot of friends in high school, lost a lot of friends, but then again, were they friends to begin with, you know, that, that's my argument, that is my argument, because the, the, the one guy, Luke, you know, in primary school, he was probably the you know the, the one of the nicest, one of the nicest people you could ever you could ever meet. And as you got to high school, as he got into um, <laughs> wacky backy, he just his whole mindset, his outlook on life completely drastically changed, and and that's peer pressure. You know, the the peer pressure, you know, or, you know, or I gotta, you know, you know, I gotta have, I gotta have a, I gotta have a girlfriend before everyone else in high school, in my class, or I gotta smoke weed, or I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta smoke, I gotta smoke cigarettes, otherwise I won't be hit. You know, the, though you know, the peer pressure, you know, the peer pressure got to me, it never got to me really. I mean, I did try weed once in school, and thought, because I smoked, because I smoked, I think it was, was it a blunt? I can't, I can't remember what I smoked, I definitely smoked, a, I remember smoking it with him, and I thought, I felt really dizzy. I felt really dizzy, and I started to talk really, started to slur my words. So it was like, so it was just like fucking, fucking, a Louis Armstrong record on fucking, on fucking 33, you know, 33. So they're going, oh, no. <coughs> I was like, ah, fucking dazed, dizzy for like, must have been an hour or two. Very, very, felt really confused. And I thought, this is not for me. This is not for me at all. And he continued down that path. And in the end, I go to... It was bizarre. You go to his house. You go to his house. And you knock, you, you knock the door. And he wouldn't answer the door. He knew it'd be me. Because he looked through the window. And um, I figured out, I think I was... Do they have his number? I think I had his number, or, or I emailed him, or at the time. Yeah, if it would have been it would have been Hotmail 2006. I was still using. And I said to him, I said, "Well, why did you answer the door?" Oh, I thought oh, I thought it was the police. And I'm like, "Why would the police be after you?" 
you know, I asked that question. I said, why would the police be after you? And he, and he, could, he couldn't answer. He said, and I said, oh, and he said, the next time you come down, can you put your hand, through the, can you put your hand where, put, can you put the hat, can you put your hand through the letterbox so I know it's you? And I'm like, I'm not being funny. You've got a fucking, you've got a fucking um, Yorkshire fucking terrier. I'm thinking if I put my if I put my fucking hand through the letterbox and he's back and he come and he comes to the door, he's gonna fucking bite my fucking hand, and he? he's gonna bite my hand, and I'm gonna have to have a, tenor, a, a tetanus jab. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. So in the end, I just, I just couldn't, I just, I just lost patience. Lost patience with him, you know. I was like, in the end, I thought, I just couldn't. I just wish I had more patience at that time. Because when you, because when you're sixteen or, because when you're sixteen or seventeen, it's just, you just, you haven't got, you haven't got the, you're not, you haven't got, you haven't quite hit maturity yet. You know, I, I mean, I'm still fucking. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to. F I, st I still feel like a kid, really. I, I don't. I, you know, I'm nearly thirty, and I still feel like I am grown up yet. You know, I still feel like a kid. You know, ch like a childish. You know, I do have a, like a childish outlook on life. You know, I really do. But but when but when friends do that and and they, and they just they don't they don't doing much for you. It's not about that, but you know, when, when they're not, when it's all, when it's all, and it's just give, 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 and take, and and it's all, no, take, 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 and it's all give. You just, it's not, it's not worth it, you know. I mean, I've had a, like I said, lost a lot of friends. Well, I mean, high school friends are not really friends, really, not at all, you know. And and then when you get experiences like that. You, it, it, it alienates you from people, you know. And I am. I mean, the last time I saw Luke was probably I've seen him a couple of years ago, and he, I'm not joking. He looked like he looked like a crystal meth addict. He really did, you know. And for all I know, he could be dead now. For all I know, you know, I really don't know, you know. You know, so you lose. So I lost contact with a lot of people high school. You know, like I said, alienated. Just alienated. You know, as I got as I got older and older, just just got more alienated from people. You know, it's like I I saw like a built. I sort of built a wall, a defense wall around myself to protect myself from people. You know, and I remember seeing a therapist, a South Korean therapist with. Newport Mind a few years ago. I think oh, what year was it? Twenty sixteen. He said, "Well, so 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 what is it then? So what is it with you and people?" He said, "And trusting people." And I was like, "Well, I build a wall around myself, you know, and I very let I very let very very let people in." So basically. I, I'm sort of like the fucking guy on Papers, Please, the, the computer game Papers, Please. I'm, I'm that guy, you know, you know, rejection. Shh. Oh, you're in. Oh, comrade, you're in, you're in. Oh, I reject you. You look like a fucking, you look like a fucking creepy pedophile like Jimmy Savile. You the fuck, get the fuck out of my country. You're not coming into my country and fucking touching up little kids. You fucking get out of my fucking country now. You know, I, I'm like, I'm that fucking guy, you know, Papers, Please. You know, I very, like I say, very, very let people in. Into my wall, you know. I build a wall, a defence wall around myself, basically, to just to protect myself and people, you know. And 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 when I do let somebody in, in into the wall, I damn make sure that they don't fucking let me fucking down. And it's been and it's been, you know. And it's like caught my colleges. Colleges, they 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 were awkward as well. They were very, they were awkward. Couldn't relate couldn't relate to anyone in college. And well, the music course I did, the people were pretty cool, you know. But it it took a while with a lot with a lot of them to open up and to talk. Really, it was just and then when you having issues, and then we having issues with 
the lecturers, you know, or oh, play with the gear, but play with the gear, play with the gear, but oh, play with the gear. Oh, I'm stoking my mixing desk, boy. Oh, but oh, but 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 I'm st I'm stoking the mixing desk like people stroke pussies. Oh, I'm stoking my mixing desk. Oh, oh, fucking hell, boy. Oh, put your in there. Play with the gear. Get stuck in. I'm thinking. So this fucking guy, this motherfucker. You know, some 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 people take a wife to bed. This motherfucker takes a mixing desk to bed, a digital mixing desk. You know, not I'm not beautiful analog. No digital mixing desk. Or oh, play with the gear, but oh, I'm just stroking. Oh, I'm just stroking. Or oh, play with the gear. Oh, I'm stroking the mixing desk. Oh, I'm gonna play with its knobs now. Oh, play with the gear. Play with the gear. Play with the gear. Play with the toys. Get stuck in. Thinking, fucking hell. Crazy, fucking crazy. So yeah, colleges were like. Ugh. You know, it's, it's only when I it's only when I started working. It's only when I started working in the Salvation Army is where I start. I made as I made really good friend. You know, Stephen Trumlet, fucking legend. You know, and and I've known him. I've known him nearly ten, ten years now, and we've only had you know in those ten years, we've only had one really bad argument, which is pretty good for me. Because you get some fuckers, all you want to do is fucking argue with me all the fucking time. You know? But he's, you know, and, and I don't expect. You know, I, I don't expect him. I mean, he hasn't got a lot of money. And he, you know. But that doesn't matter to me. You know? It's like, I go down there, I buy him donuts. You know, I don't say to him, you owe me two pounds for these donuts. Never, 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 never. Never, never. But never do that. Not on my worst day. Not at all. Never. You know? You know? And it's like... I don't know if it's like this with a lot of people. Because each person with bipolar, even though we got the same illness, we we, we, we suffer with the same illness, but it, it uh, affects us in different ways. But for me, once you make a friend, you know, you become loyal. To your, you become loyal to your friends very, very quickly, you know. And if it's a problem, you just try and resolve it as best you can. You know, there's no good. It's no good shouting at the person. It's like it's no good shouting at the person by put or grow up or fucking or, or snap out of it because anyone that says that is quite frankly they got issues themselves. You know, it's like you, you know. Because I've had that a lot over years, people people judging you for things you've, I've done and, or I haven't done, you know, people judge you and, and, and that, in a way, doesn't help how you perceive people. Because if you're being constantly judged, you sort of like, you sort of like become, well, well, you're judging me, so I'm not trying to judge you, you're judging me, so, you know, it's very, it can be very difficult you know, and and for people, and and with other people that suffer with bipolar, it's, it's hard for them. It's hard for them, it's hard for them to make friends and relate to people because we got so many issues. You know, whether it's anxiety or you're paranoid. You know, you're worried you can't trust. You can't worried you can't trust people, and and you're worried. You're only worried that, that you're going to be you're going to be right about the person that they're going to stab you in the back and they're going to be horrible to you. And, and I've had that. You know, I've had that. But I've had. There's been occasions where I've been wrong about people and happily admit that, you know, but, you know, it's like, you know, loyalty to my friends is important, you know, it's important, you know, and, and if they have a problem, no matter how small it is, you try and help them, you try and help them as best you can, you know, but um, it's like, you know, it's like with a lot of people that suffer with bipolar, like I said, you know, it's like, uh, God, I'm running out of steam here. Yeah. Fucking hell, 34 minutes. You know, it's like... Oh, I'm fucking worn out now. <laughs> Jesus. You know, fuck. But, like, but, you know, friends... Friends are very important to have... You know, it's, it can be difficult to make them. But once you make a friend, you know, you know, just do what you can for them. And 
but if you make a friend and they, they basically just they like just you know it's like if you know they're full of shit but you want but you're thinking well I gotta I gotta give them a chance you know be more trusting give them a chance the chance and if they continue if they continue to prove you right that they're full of shit you cut ties with them you know you know because you know it's like no no person is worth no person is worth too much stress where you know because because if it's affecting you you know if if your friend's problems are affecting you you know badly you know you gotta take you gotta take a break from it you know but if they if if you if 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 you feel that they're full of shit and they continue to let you down and 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 because 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 I, I find now with a lot of people that I've that I've experienced over the years they're very manipulative they can be very manipulative and they and basically they they, they just want to take they, they what they take what they can from you you know they take what they can from you and then when and when you're not when you haven't got further use for them they just they just they just basically push you off a cliff. You know, push you out of the cliff without without a without a second thought, and you don't need and you don't need friends like that. You don't need friends like that. Unless you unless you be bipolar, you don't need friends like that. You know, you need you want good friends, that will be there for you. It's not about like I said, it's not about money. You know, if it's somebody you can talk to, if it's somebody you can talk to that can comfort you, then. Oh, and and you can you can help them. You know more power to you. You know it, it's like like I said we've, it's like we've. You know it's like with Badger. I don't need, I don't. You know uh, donate game. Don't I don't donate games so I can get something out of it. You, you know I'm not that I'm not that type of person. You know I do it to, to generally help him. You know. You know, like I said, uh, you know, I've met some, I've met some really great people in the gaming community. Some really, really great people, you know, and and hopefully the friendships will continue to, well, will continue forever. I hope, you know, just just some great, great, great people that have got similar issues to myself, and it's nice to it's nice to talk to people. That sort of understand, you know, where you're coming from, because it's nothing worse than talking to somebody and they haven't got a fucking clue what you're on about. They don't understand. It's like, what's bipolar? What's bipolar? I had that when I went to holiday. I like last year. What's bipolar? What's bipolar? What's that? What's bipolar? What's that? What's that bipolar? Well, how come you don't work then? I'm thinking, what the fuck's it going to do with you if I don't fucking work or not? If I was fucking, if I wasn't meant ill, I would be fucking working. Actually, I do have a job, actually. I'm a fucking writer, musician, and comedian, apparently. So, I do have a fucking job. But yeah, oh, what's bipolar? What's that? What's bipolar? What's bipolar? What's that? What's, what's bipolar? What's bipolar? What's bipolar? And it's like, do I have to fucking explain it? Do I have to fucking explain it to this ignorant, fat, fucking oaf? Fucking mad he was. You know, you get, but you get that, you know, as... When you suffer bipolar, you get that, you get that. But, um, so yeah, I think I waffled on enough. So yeah, friends are very important. They're very important to have. I know it can be very difficult for some people that don't see it, don't, uh, <coughs> you know, it can be very, very hard for people with, especially ones that can't get out. And they don't see a lot of people, and they don't interact with a lot of people. That can be very difficult. But, but I always say, with if you can't get out, you know, or you don't see a lot of people, or you, and you want, and you generally want to see people, is to join like, you just, just join a group, you know, an art group or whatever you like to do, whatever your passion is. 
you know, you know, if you if you're artistic and you you know and you've got a passion for art or music or writing, you know, join a group. You know, join a group and see how it goes for me. You know, if you generally want to see and meet new people, do that. You know, and and it's, I don't know, it's not easy going to a new group for you know going to a new group and introducing yourself. It's not very. It's very very. It's very very hard. And daunting, especially when you suffer with bipolar, because you're like, all right, this is my first meeting here today now. Should I say I suffer with bipolar? You sort, you sort of got that in your head. You know, should I say that? Should I say I suffer with bipolar? You know, you can, you know, it can be, it can be embarrassing. But for me, I, but for, but for me personally, I just go, yeah, I suffer with bipolar. I suffer with this. I suffer with that. But here I am today. You know, I'm willing to. You know, join this group and see see if I can and see if people can inspire me to do better in my in my art artistic uh, pursuits. You know, so like I said, fam, like I said, friends, very important to have. You know, very important, and keeping them is very important as well. So, so yeah, I think I've waffled on enough. 41 minutes, Jesus fucking Christ, nobody's going to watch this, <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, hopefully I'll do more videos, I may do more videos again, you never know, I might, I might do one on, um, I might do one on OCD again, but yeah, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video, bye bye.